Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ferris and today I'm going to be going through the best way for you to answer skills based questions in your dental or medical interviews. Now before I start I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe. If you check over here you actually realise so many of you aren't subscribed to the channel and I really want to make sure all of you are up to date with all the content I make so I'd appreciate it if you could drop a sub down below to really help the channel out. So today what I'm going to try and do is talk to you about how you should be structuring and answering your skills based questions when it comes to dentistry and medicine and also at the end I'm going to be going through a practice question myself similar to the one that I did in my last video, you can check it in the cards up here or here, somewhere there, um, where I talked about how to answer questions on COVID, but today I'm going to do it on skills-based questions. So make sure you stick around to the end to see how I would answer this type of question. And just before I begin, if there's any styles of questions you'd like me to cover, like ethical scenarios, role plays, etc., please let me know in the comments down below or send me a DM on Instagram so I can make a video in the future going over these question types. So skills-based questions are actually a lot easier than you might be thinking. A lot of people really struggle to structure these and find it difficult to find their footing. Simply put, what the interviewer is looking for is the ability for you to show the skill that you've done in your personal experience and and show that you understand its relevance to dentistry. Now there's a million ways to do this and a million ways to structure an answer, but there's one really easy acronym that I like to use to help people structure their answers for these questions, and that's called STAR. The reason for this is that it's a very effective way to answer these types of questions and make sure that you haven't missed anything out. So the STAR acronym is actually made up of six letters. These are S, which stands for situation, T, that stands for task, A, that stands for action, the first R stands for result, the second R stands for reflection and the final R stands for relate to dentistry or relate to medicine. Now a lot of you might have seen this online and not heard of the last bit which is the relate to dentistry or medicine part but I think this is probably the most crucial part of answering a skills based question because it shows that you've not only developed the skill in your own time but you understand why it's relevant to dentistry and you understand why it's important to have this skill as a future dental uh, dentist or a medical doctor etc etc. So very quickly let me break down what each of them means. So with situation what you're trying to do is state a personal example where you've shown the skill that been asked. For example, you might be asked uh, where have you shown leadership skills and for the situation part you say I was house captain at my sixth form. And with the task element what you're doing is trying to say what you did. So you'll give me an example of what you did as a house captain that shows your leadership skills. So for example what you can say is something like I led my team to help organize a school quiz. The next part is action. Now this relates to how you actually did the task. Now action is quite important because before this with situation and task you're just kind of stating you know observable things so the fact that you're a house captain and you did this specific task. However with the action you go into more more detail as to how you achieved your goal. And this is important because it shows the interviewer your process and how you managed to exhibit the specific skill that they asked about. So in this example, I'm talking about leadership skills and talking about my role as a house captain organizing a quiz. So for the action, I'll say something like, I delegated tasks to other team members and to other house captains to ensure that we were able to organize a well-structured and timetabled quiz. The next part of STAR is the result. So this one's quite easy. You just say as a result of the action that I took, this is what happened. So you can say something like in this example, my team and I managed to hold a fun and engaging quiz for the school and we did so within a well timetabled fashion and through effective communication. So those first four sections of STAR are kind of giving the interviewer a basis of your personal experiences and how you've exhibited the skill that they've asked about in the first place. So as I've mentioned here, I was talking about leadership and I was talking about how I helped to organize a school quiz. Now those first four bits aren't too difficult because as as long as you've got a good example that relates to the skill, that shouldn't be too, you know, troublesome in the interview to think of. The part where you really get your marks, or the part where you really, you know, make the money, is in the last two sections, which are the reflection and the relating to dentistry or relating to medicine. So in the reflection, you're, what you're trying to show the interviewer is what you actually gained from the experience. So why you think this experience was positive, and why you think leadership skills or whatever skill they've asked about is important. The reason why I stress this is very, 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 very crucial is because of the fact that the interview doesn't really care about the specific situation. They're looking more to see if you've learned something from it. They're really trying to pick your brains and find out does this person actually know what they're talking about or are they just you know revising a specific answer that they thought of for this skill. With a reflection it's more intuitive, it's more in depth and it really gives the interviewer a more accurate representation of your understanding of the skill and whether or not it's a genuine answer or it's just something you've rehearsed you know from the night before. So with a reflection it's a good opportunity to really delve into the importance of the skill that you've developed and potentially make links to other skills to show you know the malleability of the skills that a dentist needs. So one activity I like to recommend to people to make it easier for them to find those links between skills is to make a mind map. And in this mind map, you want to write five of the key skills that you have for dentistry. So some of the ones I like to mention are things like leadership, communication, empathy, manual dexterity, critical thinking, um, teamwork. 
there's a load that you can talk about, but they're some of the ones that I think are important. And for each of those skills, you write them down on a piece of paper and you try and make links to each ones with the personal experiences you've had and with some work experience that you might have done in a dental practice or in a hospital or you know in a medical practice. By doing this, it forces you to find these unique links. It forces you to find interesting areas of reflection to show that you really do understand the importance of the skill being asked. And you understand that not every skill is standalone. They do link to each other and every single skill I'm telling you now has a link to another skill. Because you can't be a good leader without being a good communicator and you can't be a good communicator without being good at empathy. So that's a really basic example of how these skills link together. Now getting back to the reflection element, you kind of need to combine everything together. So as I said, talking about different skills and linking them together, mentioning why you think leadership is important or why you think the skill mentioned is important and finally doing so in a concise and articulate manner. So one really easy way for you to reflect on a scenario like this that I've mentioned with leadership is by saying something like, as a result of my experience organizing this quiz, I learned how to think critically and take important decisions that led to increased productivity in my team and the outcome of a successful event. This experience taught me the importance of collaborating with my team and also being a good leader by delegating tasks effectively and ensuring that everything's stuck to a specific timetable. So in that answer, I've mentioned more than one thing. I haven't just talked about leadership skills by themselves. I've talked about delegation of tasks. I've talked about things like critical thinking, time work, communication. And all these things are essential when it comes to reflecting in an answer. It's also a good opportunity for you to kind of summarize what you did and show the interviewer that you picked up on these key skills along the way. And the last section is the relate to dentistry or relate to medicine section. Now here what you're trying to do is show how this experience makes you a better candidate to do dentistry or medicine. And it also shows that you understand the importance of the skill in the field that you're applying to. One really easy way to do this is by calling up on your work experience. So in your work experience, you might have seen evidence of your dentist or doctor doing a procedure and utilizing their leadership skills to ensure everything ran smoothly. You might have seen an experience where they had to communicate effectively with the nurse, the dental nurse, the dental team, dental technician. I know some of you haven't done work experience, it's not the end of the world. If you take some initiative, you can do some research into these different types of skills. You can watch different videos online of dentists. You can read up on different skills and why they're important in dentistry. There's so many different articles, posts, even on social media that you can read that show dentist experiences in their practice and the, you know, the importance of the different skills that they develop over time. So don't think that if you haven't done a work experience, it's all over. It just means that you have to make a little bit more extra effort to find examples online and apply this in your interview. So just finishing off this example I've gone through, the way that I would relate to the dentistry is by saying these leadership skills are essential in dentistry as a dentist must be competent and confident in leading a multidisciplinary team at their practice. They must do so by delegating tasks and ensuring every member of the team understands every step of the procedure that is about to be done. One example I saw of leadership in my work experience was when the dentist was giving out instructions to a nurse on charting. This activity deals with taking information of all the teeth, citing any caries involvement, any restorations present and other things that need to be noted in order for good treatment to be provided to the patient. Through this, I saw the importance of delegating tasks in dentistry and the importance of communication between the dentist and the dental nurse. In a case like this, it's near impossible for the dentist to chart on their own, further emphasizing the importance of teamwork and leadership in a practice by ensuring every member understands the task at hand. And that's kind of how I would round off that answer. Again, this is a very basic example, and I'm sure that there's a lot of unique links that you can make and a lot of different ways that you can answer a question like that. However, this is meant to break down step by step how you would answer a question like this. Bear in mind that everyone has their different work experiences. You might have seen something a lot more interesting that showed leadership, or you might have read something online that showed you know a really unique way of showing X skill or Y skill. However, the main thing here is to show that you truly understand the importance of the skill and you have developed it in your own life as well as applying it to dentistry. Some of the common mistakes people make is that they answer the question very literally. So you might be asked, why is communication important? And they'll say something like, oh, communication is really important to ensure that the patient is very happy in the practice and that the uh, team understand what tasks need to be carried out. Now, you've technically not answered the question incorrectly, but you've not given any information to the interviewer. You've merely stated like a very basic fact that communication is important, but you haven't related it to your personal experience and your work experience. On top of this, you haven't reflected and shown the interviewer that you truly understand the importance of the task through your own experiences. So the main things you wanna do with this task is obviously explain why the skill is important, relate it to yourself, relate it to dentistry, and make sure you reflect. And also make sure that you don't rehearse an answer. It's good to have a general outline for an answer like these skills questions because they're very common. However, you don't want to sound robotic when you're answering. So I really hope that all made sense. I'm gonna try and attempt an answer myself now to give you guys a bit of insight as to how I would like to answer the question. So let me quickly get changed. Cool, so I'm gonna try and answer the question now. I've got some new drip this time compared to the last uh, video. So let's see if the answer's any better. So one example where I actually showed my communication skills was on my World Challenge expedition to Mongolia. Um, here, uh, we were tasked with doing a charity expedition and we went to an orphanage for a week where we were tasked with building an educational learning center. Um, for me, I was given the role of leader for a day where it was my task to ensure that the foundations of the orphanage learning center was built. And with this, I found a number of challenges which uh, required my uh, effective communication skills to be utilized. 
For example, I dealt with issues uh, with allocating roles as to what things needed to be done uh, to build up the foundations. Things like filling up the sandpaper bags with dirt and cementing them to ensure that all the bags were in place for the foundations of the, the building. And some of the ways that I ensured that I effectively communicated with my team and uh, dealt with all issues was by setting up a team meeting. Within this team meeting, I asked all the different members to state what tasks they would like to do, what things they wouldn't like to do. And based on this, I tried to optimize a rota to ensure that we had people doing the tasks that they enjoyed. Uh, obviously, one of the big issues of this was that I couldn't make everyone happy. So the way I came over this was I went to all the team members that did do tasks that they didn't really want to do. And I, told, and I explained to them that um, once that they finished the task for the day, on the next day the road would be changed. And after that everyone finished the task that they didn't want to do, I introduced my positive affirmations, I told them well done, I made them feel like the task that they did was very important and I appreciated the, the stress and the sacrifice that they took. And as a result of this, we were able to build the base of the foundation on that day and everyone was happy and the team morale was up. And this is something that is very essential when it comes to team building and communication because uh, the essence of the team is to make sure that everyone is, number one, got high spirits and high morale and understands the tasks that they're doing in order to increase productivity. And reflecting upon this experience, I also found that not only is communication important in the way you speak, there's other skills that link up to this. So in being a good communicator, you must also be a good, good at empathy, uh, a good empathizer. And um, one of the ways that I found this was, as I said, I saw that there were a lot of um, team members that felt a bit dejected, a bit upset that they couldn't do the task that they wanted. So by using positive affirmations and by ensuring that I really did explain to them that the reason why they did this task is because it was for the need of the team and that I would uh, deal with their concerns at the next event, um, it really showed me the importance of adapting not only my communication style, but understanding and empathizing with the situation that the, my team members were in. Um, furthermore, as an effective communicator, it also helps you build up those leadership skills. So with leadership, with leadership it's important to identify um, the weaknesses in your team and be able to delegate tasks effectively. And this was really demonstrated in my experience in Mongolia, where I had to delegate tasks for different roles and delegate tasks uh, in order to ensure that there was a, a well-timetabled rota. And most importantly of all, I realized that these skills are extremely transferable to dentistry because being an effective communicator can affect a, a dentist in multiple different ways. One of the main ways is through the interaction between the dentist and the patient. So by being an effective communicator, not only do you help in, improve your long and short term rapport with the patient, but you also, also ensure that the patient understands the treatment that needs to be done. So um, this is particularly effective and important when trying to gain informed consent, whereby a, a patient needs to understand the different risks and, and um, benefits and implications of treatments that are about to be done on them because uh, because determination of informed consent is a very important thing in dentistry and is actually one of the GDC principles that needs to be upheld. Uh, on the flip side of this, communication is also important in the dental practice when relating to dealing with your team. So a dentist must be able to deal with multiple members of the most disciplinary team. These include the dental nurse, the dental technician, the dental receptionist, alongside other very important members of the team. And the only way to do so in a um, respectful and professional fashion is by being an effective communicator. Things like uh, identifying the manipulation of your tone in order to deal with difficult situations, um, also being empathetic and, imp uh, and introducing the understanding that team morale is very important in the dental practice shows the importance of having effective communication in the practice. And lastly, um, communication can be upheld not only in a verbal fashion with the manipulation of tone and positive affirmation, but also non-verbally. So little things such as nodding and eye contact with the patient shows the patient that you're invested in the concerns that they have and also shows your team members that you're invested in anything they want to bring up, wh whether it be concerns, whether it be um, interesting ideas for the practice or other things along those manners. So yeah, that's how I would answer that question. Again, just a few pointers that I'd add there with regards to how I answered it. In a real interview, you might not have as much time to talk that freely, like an interview might ask you specific follow-up questions or they might want to probe you on specific examples that you've mentioned. So understand the answer that I gave, you may not be able to do that to the same degree in a real interview because again, it's more dynamic than that. You have to remember these interviews are more like conversations rather than you just talking at the interviewer. The second thing I'd probably say as a critique to myself is ensuring that I just don't repeat different points. Um, but that is natural, it does happen within an answer, but that's why you know having like a general outline and certain points that you'd like to mention in your answer can be really effective. This one was a bit off the top of the head, so you know it's not gonna be perfect, but that's kind of like the most natural way I thought I could do it is just by answering it as clearly as possible. And last of all, make sure that you try and find those unique links. And by unique link, I mean linking to different types of skills or did linking to interesting experiences that you might have had that really show your understanding of the skill that's been asked about. And that's about it really. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to check out any more videos with regards to interview questions, make sure that you check out the cards up here or here. 
and uh, that will give you a link to my interview playlist where I go through different types of questions. Also, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below to stay up to date with all the videos that I make. And lastly, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me about dentistry, about the whole process, or you want to just suggest some video ideas, please do drop me a DM on Instagram or write them in the comments box down below, and I'll be sure to check them as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.